I'm Adil Kumar. In this video, we will see the representation of complex number on Argan diagram and also see what is the effect of multiplying them by i. So let us say that we are representing the imaginary part of a complex number along the y-axis and the real part along the x-axis. So imaginary part i is along the y-axis, the real part r is along the x-axis over 0. So let me consider a general vector. Let's say a complex number z equals to a plus bi. Now in this case, a is the real part, b is the imaginary part. So to represent this on the organ diagram, we'll go to a point, Cartesian point, which is a comma b, that is to say, along the real axis, we'll go a units, and along the imaginary axis, we'll go b units. Let's say this is b units, right? General. So we're just taking a general point, a comma b, to represent any complex number, right? On this, similar to Cartesian plane, where the y-axis represents the imaginary part and the x-axis represents the real part. Then this arrow from the origin to, to the point to represents a vector if we draw an arrow, right, like this. This also represents a vector. So we are going to use this terminology of complex numbers in solving many questions in vectors also. So I hope that link helps you later on also. Okay. So this line which I've shown here represents the complex number Z, which has real part of A and the complex part of B. Now, if I multiply this by I, what happens? Let's have a look. So I times Z is I times A plus BI. Expanding, we get AI plus BI squared i squared is negative 1, so I could write this as ai minus b, and rearranging, I write minus b plus ai, right? So it becomes minus b plus ai, which could be represented now on the same organ diagram as minus b. So that much of unit I am taking along this direction, so this is minus b. A along the vertical axis, so this much unit I'm taking around kind of here, so that becomes the point, and this arrow joining with the origin represents the complex number i times z. It looks as if it has rotated counterclockwise by 90 degrees. How can we be sure about it? Well, let's find. Uh, the the angle, right? So in this particular case, in the first place, let's say this is point A, and here we go to point B from the origin. The slope of this line is how much? Let's calculate that slope, right? That should help us to find the angle. So the slope of this line is, let's say slope M of the first vector, where say OA is equal to the height, this is the opposite side, which is equal to B over the base, which is the R real coordinate A, right? So the slope is B over A. On the other hand, what is the slope of OB? Now in this case, if you find the slope of OB, then, you know, it is the height. In this case, the height is equal to a right so this is equal to a a and the base length is minus p so the slope of this ob is minus ab now what happens when you multiply the two if you multiply the two slopes then you get minus ab times b over a and that is indeed one so if slope of two when multiplied gives you 1, it means that those two lines are perpendicular, right? So these are perpendicular line segments, is that okay? 
Now these line segments are representing our complex number, right? So OA is actually representing Z, the complex number, and OB represents I times Z. So what you notice here is that the angle between these two complex numbers is 90 degrees, correct? So that ensures this is 90 degrees. And from the rotation, you can see very clearly that it is counterclockwise. So what we conclude from here is that if a complex number is multiplied by i, the effect on the Argand diagram is to rotate the vector representing it by 90 degrees anti-clockwise or counterclockwise by 90 degrees. Right. So that is what we learn from this video. I'm Adil Kumar. You can always share and subscribe my videos to learn a lot. Thank you and all the best.